Hey guys, um, I'm just uh, trying to. Uh, I was just trying to get all my dark sigils. I need five. I have four, but in the process, I found uh, Hawkwood, and I feel like I should talk while I'm here because he might go away. The poor wretched souls. Be they lord or legend, the curse shows no mercy. What a sham. The poor be they, what a sh Looks like, that definitely looks like Artorias' great sword. His is just, again, an evocation, but that is, that's very similar. But, um, uh, yeah. I guess I'll finish all this up and speak with Cornix because I forgot to do that in the last episode. All right. Um, okay, so is he gaining admission to the okay. keeper? <laughs> so I believe this is the last one. I might. Uh, oh, I. Then yeah. shall we then? Okay. It's all the same. As I have said, we pit those branded. Yep. B. Okay, that's the same. All right. So now, just for the purposes of moving forward with stuff, I have grabbed all of my. Um, huh. Leonard is gone again. I've grabbed all of my. Uh, Sigils. Five total. That's all I can get. I wonder if that's where he went before. I wonder if I could have um, went to go and if he was gone, I could have just walked out here and he would have been there. I almost tried because I knew that he goes out there from time to time, or that you can find him there. But I didn't know if it was exactly when he was gone or not, so I just happened to find him. Um, so yeah, and I also did not speak to Cornix. Ah, oh, there you are, unkindled He was also wearing a... I wish to express my gratitude uh, I for her. trusting a lowly pyromancer and allowing me to gaze upon this majestic flame. As promised, I will impart pyromancies to you. But first, you will need a flame of your own. Careful you don't burn yourself with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so let's see what he's got. He's got Fireball, Elementary Pyromancy. Um, okay. Pyromancy, this so Fire Surge. Pyromancy of Cornix of the Great Swamp. Cornix is a venerable pyromancer of an older mold, said to have restored a number of spells lost to the past, amongst which this is the most well known. Great Combustion. Uh, pyromancy is to at once know fear and longing. The resultant power of which depends on both the caster's intelligence and faith. So yeah, that's the change in this game is that um, pyromancy now is like dark in two, where you need to have intelligence and faith in order to use pyromancy. Not sure about that one. Flash sweat. Um, unique pyromancy of the Great Swamp associated with Carmina. Intense sweating increases fire damage absorption. An influential pyromancy that internalizes flame, likely forming the foundation for many subsequent spells. Who was the person in Dark Souls 1 that used, that made all of the like iron, the flash sweat and the iron, uh, whatever, just where you internalize the flame? Who was that? I'm gonna look it up. Flash sweat. Iron flesh. 
That's what I was thinking of. Iron Flesh. Carmina. Okay. Just, I, I was thinking it might be, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, so Carmina was the one that developed all of those pyromancies where he would, like, internalize the flame and take on weird properties because you became the flame or the flame became part of you. So it has all the pyromancer crown and the uh, um, pyromancer garb, which, you know, this looks, I think it looks a little bit more like um, Titchy Grin stuff. I don't, that's what I've always associated with. It does. It certainly doesn't look like the raggedy robes, but maybe it is. Maybe it just got a weird... Yeah, there's an antler associated with that. Attire of Pyromancers of the Great Swamp. In the Great Swamp, it was thought that adorning oneself with natural fauna would provide protection from the flames of pyromancy. Yeah, animals. Bronze was ritualistically used ritualistically to ward off evil spirits and keep darkness at bay. So that's interesting. They gave them different, uh, they gave them different, uh, garb for this game. To learn pyromancies, you must vow to become my pupil. I know, I know, but such is the way of the world. Respect your elders and so on. And pyromancy, of course, is no exception. <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, we talked about this a lot in one, that pyromancy is sort of a, you know, like a, a, a you know, a master-pupil relationship, like a apprenticeship, you know what I mean? And it even seems like Cornex, like, doesn't even, like, fully he's like yeah i know i know i get it whatever but we have to do it like it's just how you do pyromancy i don't know it's just interesting to me oh we'll need a pyromancy tome to learn more advanced pyromancies though unorthodox that would be the most expedient way to make progress if this were the great swamp and you had the luxury of time we could have trained you the hard way <laughs> I don't want to know what that way is. To learn pyromancies, you must vow to become my pupil. Uh, I know. Yeah, I yeah. Do not be gone for long. What is a teacher without a pupil? So I'm giving <laughs> your life meaning is basically what you're saying. Okay. Um, so let's look at this pyromancy flame. Flame catalyst used by pyromancers. Equip a pyromancy flame to utilize pyromancy. Pyromancies must be attuned at a bonfire before use. Skill. Combustion. So you can actually use combustion without learning it. It's just a skill. Hmm. Interesting. All right. And uh, one more thing, which there's a Katarina guy there, which might involve me reloading. So once you draw out the strength, and I did a little early, like I forced it, I just kept dying until, in fact, now I can become Embered again. But yeah, Yol dies at that point. After you've drawn out your true strength, then we have five sigils. Right. And in his place, we are visited by someone else. All 
her helmet kind of reminds me of the uh I mean it's it's new, but it kind of reminds me of a firekeeper's um blindfold. Also she has black hair like Malcolm. But who is this? Oh, pretty. Art thou good yours, master? I am Yuria of Londor, a close friend of his. Londor. Thanks to thee, your soul is redeemed. Allow me to express my gratitude in his stead. Another matter. That a lord art thou not? Bearer of the dark sigil. And our Lord of Hollows. For the time thou remainst, our Lord, we of Londor shall serve thee. And I, of course, am also thine. Okay, so she speaks in the old dialect as well. Uh, Yol did not. Um, she's calling us the Lord of Hollows. She's from Londor. She's friends with Yol. We have given Yol a purpose by letting him give us the Dark Sigils. She keeps saying bearer of the Dark Sigils, not bearer of the Dark Sign. Very interesting. Yuria. Yol. Yuria. And she has a number of things, including what he used to sell but also some other choice things. Purging stone, ash-colored stone encasing a skull, reduces undead curse. Inhabitants of Londor, the land of hollows, use the secret treasure to feign normalcy. Occasionally a hollow fools even himself and turns on his own kind. So this kind of tells you, um, unlike the first game, the purging stone cures your curse. The purging stone doesn't cure anything in this game. Um, it just makes you look human, but you still have the dark sigils, and you're still, like, we've essentially become truly hollow, and we're now the Lord of Hollows. But, um, yeah, it's interesting, this, this was also associated with Velka a little bit, and Seath, but, like, this was sold by Oswald of Kareem. We have the poison throwing knives. Used by assassins of Londor, Land of Hollows, the poison is jokingly known as Hollows Blood. Okay, so assassins come from Londor. That's interesting. And we have the Londor Braille Divine Tome. A Braille Tome of Londor, first spoken by Lillian of the Sable Church. There's like so much stuff here, and like obviously we'll get to it, like we will internalize this a lot later, but right now we're learning a lot about Londor. Lillian and the Sable Church. Uh, give this to a storyteller to learn miracles of Londor. This is a forbidden tome as it offers salvation to all hollows, and conversely curses all things living. Okay, so it is a braille tome, but we shouldn't give it to Arena because she is... she's not into these types of spells. Um, we have someone else we can give it to much later on in the game. But it's interesting because it says it's forbidden tome. It's from the Sable Church. Sable obviously meaning like black, dark, humanity, and then hollows, Londor. <laughs> I'm just saying words now. Uh, but it's forbidden because it offers salvation to hollows. Uh, and so... If you're giving Hollows salvation, it says, you are conversely cursing all things living. You are giving power to those that are hollowed and taking away power from those that are living. As if being hollowed is the preferred state. Is Yuria hollow? You know, is everyone from Londor hollow? Like, is she a functioning hollow? This is the first functioning hollow we've ever seen? Or is this a belief of human humanity that they want to give salvation to hollows? Very interesting. 
We'll learn more about the Sable Church and such, but I'm going to buy this because we need it for, for later. And she also sells the Dark Hand, the one of the weapons of the Dark Wraiths. Associate with Manus. Associate with Koth. Weapon that allows its will to evoke an art unique to Londor. Huh. So now it's unique to Londor. Does it sound a little bit like New Londo? Maybe. Londor, the land of the hollow. It is also said to be an ancient relic of a primordial serpent. Koth. The Dark Hand mercil mercilessly saps the essence of its victims, and could also double as a special shield. Cannot be used two-handed. Life Drain is its skill. Embrace the victim and steal their HP. Used to be humanity. Can only be used against humans. So interesting. Untrue Dark Ring. One of the illusory rings worn up by the Hollows of Londor. Retain human appearance while hollow. The hollows of Londor were wretchedly aged, fraught with deceit and dubiously secretive. It is no wonder that they are deeply detested. So yeah, I mean, we have the Purging Stone, which will fake normalcy. We have the Untrue Dark Ring. Uh, and then we have Hodrick, who asked us, like, are you hollow or are you just faking it? Like, as if he had met people from Londor before. Because um, it seems like this seems, this seems to be unique to Londor. So it is interesting. Dubiously secretive, deceitful, I don't know. It's into Londor almost seems to take place of Kareem in terms of the weird place. Untrue White Ring. Uh, take the appearance of a phantom. So we have a uh, human while hollow or just a phantom. And these are fun to play around with in PvP. And then of course she offers the Ring of Sacrifice. Uh, a ring of Belka. So I don't know. Londor is seeming pretty interesting right now. That a lord art thou not? Bearer of the dark. For the time thou remainst our lord. And I of till we meet again. May the dark sigil guide thee. So yeah. Uh, well, we're just going to try to uh, take on a couple tough enemies here. I'm sure we'll be fine, but that will be the rest of the episode, I think. Oh yeah, we're, we're doing good right now. Okay. So now we just have to beat, defeat Old Master. Oh gosh. So much health, and he has so much stamina. But he can be staggered kind of easily. Don't fall off the edge. Well, you can, but I, I'd rather beat you. Yeah, look at how much he can attack. I wasn't getting brutally murdered by him, at least. Sorry, my, I don't know if you can hear my cat in the background, but just got a hairball. <laughs> All right, so 
for quote unquote killing Old Master, and we get Uchi Kitana, Master's Attire, and Master's Gloves. A unique katana characterized by the fine craftsmanship of an eastern land where it was forged. The finely sharpened blade cuts flesh like butter and causes bleeding, but breaks easily as a result. The skill is hold. Assume a holding stance to rapidly execute a lunging slash with normal attack or deflecting parry with a strong attack. I think I played my first playthrough with this. I think it gave me my love for the Uchi katana. But we will forgo it this time. Master's attire, which is like the rags in Dark Souls 2. Terribly worn shirt. Men are fond of wearing tails, weaving tails to explain the ragginess of their garb. An old master says, My sixth sense warned me of danger, and I danced between flurries of blades, unscathed, but alas, my clothes went to tatters. Terribly worn manchet manchets. Men are fond of weaving tails to explain the ragginess of their garb. And master says, My sixth... Okay, same exact... Now we can see an item in there and corpses. So, yeah, we definitely want to check that out later. We'll get there, we'll get there. Okay. And while we're still kicking here, let us go and fight. I mean, we're talking about Londor, we're talking about, you know, all this stuff. Let's go fight the Dark Wraith in Lothric. Easily now, which is good. All right. I'm nervous that this guy's gonna slaughter me. There he is. A legitimate dark wraith. Just like the ones in Dark Souls 1. It's a dark sword. I guess we saw them in um, the. We saw the armor in uh, Dark Souls 2 as well. hand and everything. Ooh. Same move set. And with that we get the red eye orb. I'm glad that I didn't die quickly. The Red Eye Orb is rooted in a tiny land swallowed by darkness long ago. Nulando? Lulisil? I mean, it's hard to associate anything. I mean, it's interesting. I guess I've never associated that. That's crazy. I mean, it makes sense. Like, Koth was in Nulando, in the Abyss, where the Four Kings were fought. And he was the one that convinced Lulisil to, like, embrace the dark, and that you know, ravaged them. But the only other place we know besides Ulusil that's been ravaged by the dark is New Londo. 
and Koth was there when we met him. Although he gives us a really interesting story about, um, you know, Gwyn, and, and I believe that, you know, what he's saying is rooted in truth. It is interesting that, I don't know, he's corrupted a lot of stuff. I don't know, it's interesting. So anyway, the red eye orb is rooted in a tiny land swallowed by darkness long ago. Maybe it was some, maybe long ago. Some choose to put the orb to other uses. To embark on this path, enter the service of Rosaria in the Cathedral of the Deep. Uh-huh. Well, we were planning to go there anyway. What's this fair I'm not doing? How did you go up faster than me? Well, now we have something else to do. We have to investigate about Rosaria. Okay, I'm definitely holding my... Uh... I'm just convinced it doesn't work. I gotta get a new controller. Yeah, like, I'm holding down my, uh... Okay, so I guess if I, like, press it really hard... Yeah, a lot of times it, like, goes, and then it... No, it's going... I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> sometimes it goes up, sometimes... I don't know if you can hear it, but sometimes there's a little delay. Alright. So let's go back and we'll see. If Leonhard is there and we can speak to him about what we've done. Gaining admission, even I. <laughs> found a proper red eye. I have. Brilliant. I knew you were no ordinary man. Yay. Now invade and pillage all you like. And if you grow weary of your duty, you too may become a finger. A finger? Come on. Give yourself to Rosaria of the Cathedral of the Deep. <laughs> so I know that he's the ring finger. Wait, I told you there's more fingers, and now he's also mentioned Rosaria, who's in the cathedral. And we can become a finger ourselves. Now in vain, I come. It is interesting, because in, you know, in the original game, like, getting the, this versus the regular, like, cracked red eye orbs is like, it was quite a bit of a work you needed to do to get it. And this one, they're just like, basically like, eh, I mean, like, I suppose not everyone's gonna like find this on their first playthrough, but it's just like pretty easy once you know what to do. Well, very well then take. Um. I feel good on endurance now. I feel bad like. Putting up luck. Oh, I do. I want to go fate at some point. So I want to start using miracles on this playthrough. Might be a while though. Farewell, Ashen One. May the flames go. All right. Is there any other loose ends that we need to take care of while we're here? Tower key. Well, we're not gonna get that. Um, okay. I'm just looking at my list here. That's weird. I don't remember that. Okay, yep, yeah, we did that. Alright, I think we're good. I mean, I guess the one thing that we can do is get to... Let's get to the Road of Sacrifices. 
because we need to essentially go there from here. Okay. This will take some time, I'll just save us some time to do it all here rather than in the next episode. Okay. And this way we can kind of go through this area. Because we didn't in the last section, the last episode. Ooh, really? Guess they have 150. Get his health. He's dead. Oh, I just hope I can kill the uh, thing we need to kill here. Um, okay, might as well get this. Got a large soul and another set of wearing skulls. See if I can. Um, oops. Let's see if I can shoot this down and let it fall. Where is it? My gun is gone too. Wow, I can't reach it. I can shoot it from here. Yes. Flame stone plate ring. Stone plates are symbols of true knights, and red stone plates are granted to those who valiantly face chaos. Okay. Ugh. I guess we were coming down last time. Fight num another enemy of the Boreal Valley. Another person with frost. Not a monster yet. Ugh. You have to do this with Forestus. Yeah, 
although I'm almost frostbit. Hopefully I can... Okay. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but I mean, what am I gonna do? Irithyll straight sword, which is great. Maybe we can learn a little bit about Irithyll. Straight sword bestowed upon the Outrider Knights of Boreal Valley. So we know that Bor Vort was a, an Outrider Knight, but these are like the Outrider Knights. Like there might be a lot of them. But Vort was given the Pontiff's left eye, which made him turn into a beast. But these guys probably didn't have an eye so seared. But anyway, this weapon is enshrouded in frost and causes frostbite. Every Outrider Knight one day devolves into a beast. Okay, everyone does. But so we met him at different times. Like Vort is older than this one, I guess. Constantly hounded by Pontiff Sullivan's black eyes. There you go. And its stance. So yeah, this is a straight sword. So I wonder what it takes to upgrade this, because it might be fun to play with this because 124, if I recall, this was like 117 when I first got it. So I mean it is a good straight sword. And it has thrust. And it has obviously the whole frostbite element. And it's Pretty. I might. I might go with that. I might start leveling that up instead. Oop! Sound clip. All right. Well, let's go. I mean, since we're basically doing like a loose ends video. And it doesn't, like, I'm either going to end it now or we can just do this, so. Let us go and see what it takes to upgrade. And I might start doing that. I'll need six right away. But, okay, four. Ah, tis good, tis Um, yeah, twinkling. See, that's the thing. Uchi takes twi uh, tightening, though. All right, well, I don't have any twinkling. And it's 140 versus 124. But again, one upgrade would bring me to 134 plus 34. Okay, so it's it's a little less scaling. But again, I'm gonna refine it. Well, maybe I can't refine it because it's got frostbite. Hmm, we'll see. We'll see once I start getting twinkling what I what I want to do with that. For now, I'm good with what I have. Seven. No, it's a shirt. Be like that. And uh, can I upgrade? Well, very well, that Hagen. No, I'm already very up to well, seven thousand. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for this episode. We covered a lot of random things. And, uh... Yeah, next time we will... Um... Take a look at the Road of Sacrifices and what lies beyond it. Perhaps the Cathedral of the Deep? Perhaps something else? I don't know. We'll have to see. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.